Deputy Mayor, thank you for allowing me to address the meeting tonight. My name is Robin Rayner and I'm the elected spokesperson for the strong protest against the National Nuclear Waste Site at Hill End. We are on the short list of six. I would like to thank the Chair, the Mayor, the Deputy Mayor, the councillors and the public gallery for the opportunity to address the meeting. Our family owns and runs Pomonara Marina Stud, directly opposite the proposed site. Together, we run 5,500 superfine wool merino sheep. We produce food and fibre. At the first meeting held with the government representatives at Hill End, the community unanimously opposed the proposed site. There were no dissenters. The Department of Industry, Innovation and Science representatives, led by the divisional head, Mr Bruce Wilson, met with directly affected neighbours on Wednesday the 3rd of December 2015. <coughs> Sorry. The divisional head wanted to restrict these meetings to one-on-one -on -one with individual stakeholders, but with the community excluded. They eventually agreed to our request. We had submitted to the representatives our questions along with a flowchart summarising our general objections, a copy of which is going to be, has been provided to all the councillors. Vital questions asked remain largely unanswered. We are concerned that the answers won't be available until after the 120 days objection period has expired. The seismological report, hydrological report, geotechnical report, environmental and sociological impact report. Until they are made available to us, we cannot make informed objections, nor can the expert panel make expert decisions. If the period of objections runs from the Friday the 13th of November 2015 when the government announcement was first made to the 11th of March 2016. That would effectively shorten the objection period to seven weeks. This is procedurally unfair. The community meeting was held on Thursday the 4th of December 2015 with the department again where further concerns and questions were raised. We were astounded to learn that in Hill End only one voluntarily nominated property is being considered. This site is not ideal. There is no consideration of an ideal site, only the consideration of a self-interested person. We ask the councillors to ensure there is procedural fairness and we seek your vital support in defending and protecting the safety and welfare of our community and the economic security of our community's region. We wish to correct the government record as to the proposed location of the dump. It is not at Sally's Flat, nor is Sally's Flat a village. The proposed dump location is in fact within the immediate pastoral area of Hill End. Thank you so much for listening to our community's concerns and the opportunity to address this meeting. Robin Rayner. government's made it quite clear that 120 days is going to stand. We can't just let rest and let this settle. We have to keep fighting, and I know we are. Um, with just a few notes that I just want to quickly, before I hand over, I'd like to let everybody know that our online petition has finally reached 3,000 signatures. So thank you. is coming and we just, as you can appreciate, it's really important to get everything worded correctly and that has been checked and double checked. So I know that's frustration that we wanted to have it here today, but we will have it, okay? After that comes out, then we'll have some volunteers to help us get it around to different places and so that's where I'll call on the community for help for that. Um, also, uh, just to let you know, there's a campaign bucket at the door that um, if anyone would like to make any donations to that, that would be very much appreciated. And um, one last quick thing is just important. I've received a, because these are things that have happened since and we've got everything in writing now. We have a, a letter documented by the school bus driver who drives the bus um, from Bathurst to... Uh, 
the Hilling Safala Bathurst Crossroads, I guess is the best way to describe it. So um, I won't, um, would the meeting like me to read it? Yes. Okay. So to whom it may concern, as a lifelong resident of the Bathurst region and a bus driver, bus driver of a route in close proximity to the Sully's Flat area, I'm writing this letter to outline my concern regarding the proposed nuclear storage plant. I understand that whilst this facility may be constructed completely harmlessly and, you may, and maintained in a manner that ensures no drastic health dangers will occur, the location of such a plan remains eagerly inept. 85% of Australia's population lives on 1% of the land area. It seems appalling to me that despite having an opportune 99% of empty land, most of which being inhabitable desert, you are strongly considering placing it in the 1% that in later decades will be strongly prone to urban growth. In only 21 years, the Bathurst region is, pros is prospected to increase in population by 26.25% from 2015, and the inclusion of a nuclear storage plant could slow the benefits of this urbanisation. Despite this issue that you may be well aware of, I have numerous others I wish to direct your attention towards. Driving a weighty vehicle every day in this region, I know that the roads in which you may attempt to cart the copious amounts of waste are inappropriate. I understand that the location of this plant may be becoming strongly considered due to the initial belief of easier transportation. But if so, I must strongly disagree due to this infrastructure being so ill-equipped. I must also mention the fact that those living in the Sully's Flat region with properties that have been in their families for generation would become economically as well as possibly medically disadvantaged by this pro proposition. Not only would the value of their families' properties decrease, but the income they receive from their livestock and vegetation is also irrefutably bound to diminish. In conclusion, I wish to strongly counteract the proposition of such a premise in the Sally's Flat region and implore that another site considerably more suitable is cho chosen. Kind regards, Clint Muffin. Thank you. So does anyone have any questions or would like to know anything else regarding what I've just read out to you? Okay, so I'll hand it back to Lou. Thanks, Lou. Okay, aren't you all lucky to have a wonderful woman like Robert representing you as your spokesman? I'd like to hear you. Process and then change it. And, and you do notice 
Um, Bruce Wilson, who I've got to tell you, is a very honourable guy. In the case of, I've got to know him, I don't know the other, but I have got, and if Bruce says he relates something the ministry does, if he says he tells something to me, he does. And he will honourably report what you have said. Do we want to assure you of that? Uh, I've got a lot of respect for the guy and he has a lot of knowledge as well. But um, the way it should have happened was I should have been able to call a meeting here in Hill End in this region and tell you what was going on before you read about it. The newspaper, that wasn't able to be happened. And I do regret the media concentrated solely on the fact that there was going to be a, a site pretty much whether you like it or not and that, as I've been at pains to get back on track is not so. What uh, Robin has related to you about what the Minister and I have said is entirely true. If the community doesn't want it, the community does not have to have it. And uh, it's also true what Bruce says, he has a duty to talk to everyone, as Robin has told you, and that's why the 120 days will stay before the Minister makes, a, makes a, an announcement and then they will go on to where their preferred one, two, I'd say probably going to be a couple of sites. Now, I think it's highly unlikely that it's going to be an issue for this area past that time, but I cannot give you a definitive answer on that now, but at the end of the day, the Minister will say, we now progress to where we will send out the hydrological, the geology, all that, the, you know, the team that has to actually look at one of the preserved sites, and then it's quite possible there won't be any. However, I don't think that's likely. I would suspect either in the Territory or or, uh, or, or South Australia there will be. Uh, even the one in South Eastern Queensland, I don't think, uh, has quite the same situation as we do have here. Now, that I also want to say, I said at the onset, and I'm still, in fact, on Friday I'm going, I'm meeting the Minister Josh and going to uh, Lucas Heights to assure myself things have not changed. Uh, in the last 14 or 15 years when I first had to do with this subject when the South Australian government was meant, actually with full key, had an agreement with all the states of Australia to have one repository for all this sort of waste we're talking about and South Australia agreed to put it in, uh, uh, in the old range area. And that was all going to travel through Broken Hill, which was in my left, but that's why I had to get across it. Uh, we went down to Lucas Heights, one of the members of the uh, council there, and uh, realised that most of what we're talking about is being stored around Australia now at Lucas Heights and, and hospitals in the main uh, around the place without any problems at all. Um, but but um, the, the real issue that they were talking about in Breaking Hill then, of course, was the fact that most of South Eastern Australia, where most of this stuff is, will travel through Breaking Hill on the way to the site of South Australia. But, um, and we, we realised that there was no issue about the transportation, to be quite honest, and I mean this, there is, we're all in far more danger almost than every town in Australia from the fuel and the gas and the chemicals traveling through it every day. This stuff, uh, the low level really, it is low level, and the people who actually look at it. Well, we'll get to the end of the I'm happy to talk about that. Um, but the low level stuff, they don't even have to wear special equipment to deal with it. We're not using it for the time. The intermediate is, is, is put into a thing, I actually have a piece of it. The sin rock is one way to describe it. It's held in a hard, a hard piece, it's, um, it's, it's definitely not as dangerous as something that is going to make a terrifying picture or whatever, but, but let me, without going into all the detail of that, and I'm sure you did ask Bruce and the like about that sort of thing, the danger, I don't see that there's a danger issue here. Um, the, the talk about erosion and, and water, uh, water and air, it doesn't just if it's exposed, it doesn't get, uh, doesn't become part of the the, uh, the atmosphere. It actually has to be uh, uh, much more solid. It has to, it has to it either as a gas or whatever become part of it. So just what I'm trying to say is the danger side. I have never been frightened of. However, as I said from the onset, it's a lot. Mostly, it's about impressions, the reality of everybody. So. Uh, I don't live here so that if you don't want it, you don't have it, that's fine. But I'm not going to lie to people and say there's danger here where there's actually not.
not. I'm not going to lie. I want people to know the facts, not the fiction. But I totally accept that if a region doesn't want, the region shouldn't have to have it. And uh, I think it's highly unlikely that, that that will go past that. But we have to wait till the end of that time for that to be made. And their preferred sites, if they have one at the end of the day, then will have to be uh, then will have to be uh, settled where that is. And I'll send out and do probably a very expensive surveys and, and all the rest of it that the, the department has to do to. Uh, to do it. Now, there is one thing that uh, was reported to me, uh, one early on, that a lot of things went around, that's not unnatural in the way it was done, that rumours get out. One, that the place had already been bought, was going to happen, which is obviously totally untrue. Another one, that the rods were coming out here, that is also totally untrue. Spread rods are not involved in this, whether it's here or whether it's somewhere else. Spread rods for this facility we're talking about are not involved. That's yeah. <laughs> Sorry? There's waste, there's waste, as I said, that's held in suspension, but the rods are not involved. That's a totally different thing. The rods from the things that are done in France, what happened, at some stage they're going to have to, and they've already looked at, and they really did pick out a site from memory about eight years ago in the Territory to put the serious stuff. We are not talking about rods. That's it. Green say that. Well, Greenpeace do say those things. I'm telling you, we are not talking about rocks. I don't no, care what Greenpeace yeah. say, they are from the Australia. I don't believe you. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> so, you say that now, but in two years. Yeah. Exactly. I guess without saying he said, she said. Yeah, I'm, I'm, let me, okay, let me get that to go. So, look, um, I'm happy to take questions. I'm not the technical Sorry. people, I wanted to use the talk to the technical people because, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, but, uh, and I'm sorry it took so long, I could not get here for the last meeting because we were in Parliament, I did try to, but we were down to 76 people, but we must have been about 14 away on leave, uh, and uh, that was long standing stuff, so I couldn't get back to the last meeting. We did try to do something one weekend, Nick tried to help me do something that didn't work. So, but I'm here now, I'm happy to take whatever questions you have. At the end of the day, it's your country and what you want will happen. I've had people say, so well, Baptist and maybe you get a say. Well, they can have a say, but it's not worth much compared to the people who live in Hill and the Farley. Your say is worth 10 of theirs or 20 of theirs. So the issue is we've got the local, uh, the local feeling and, and so far, that's very obvious. But, um, and I don't expect to change uh, that that will change. Uh, but you must respect to the Bruce and his troop have a job to do, and so people who do want to talk to them about it have the right to do that. I don't mean that that's going to change uh, what government feels about the community, but the process does have to go on because it will do that in all six places. We're not going to change it just for one. I, I, I will say that in, in all of this, a couple of things that really did come out. The roads one, obviously, um, the government would have to do the roads to a, you know, a good enough situation in the unlikely event that you change your mind. Um, the roads would have to be fixed to an extent that they could deal with trucks uh, involved. Um, and one, one, uh, one of the uh, neighbours did bring up with me the fact that I thought was a really good one, and I think Bruce mentions it in his correspondence, that uh, if a neighbour, in five or ten years, wherever this thing goes, I don't think neighbours selling will be an issue. But immediately, of course, I, I, I actually agree that if a neighbour decides you want to sell today or tomorrow to where they decide to put this, it would have, it could easily have a serious effect on the value of the place. And in fact, Bruce uh, has already, as I did with Josh, uh, Bruce has already mentioned to the Minister that wherever this goes, wherever it goes, even if it's in South Australia or wherever, um, they will have to think about um, you know, how they will deal with that issue because it's, it's a very real one, a very obvious one. Um, as far as people's anxiety, etc., I do apologise about that. I apologise about the way it happened. Um, but I, I, I have to say, given that I don't believe there's a safety issue of any serious content, um, I don't think that anxiety on that issue, the anxiety should be about does it affect the value of your place and all that sort of thing. And, and I accept that that's an issue, um, but you'll just have to bear with us for the next 
until uh, until the government makes a decision, makes a claim that uh, that it's not going to be used. Um, can, can, can I say that, um, what, what, what went uh, into Lucas Heights, I'm not totally familiar if you're talking about what was brought to the plant the other day, that was waste, but it was waste that had not been reformed, that had not been reformed into this solid, there's no liquid involved in what we're talking about, there's no powder involved in what we're talking about. What they would have been taken to Lucas Heights would not have been set in a solid form where it can't blow, it can't melt, it can't, it can't um, uh, yeah, dissolve into water and that sort of thing. So we're talking about something that uh, it is, we're still not talking, even with the intermediate, we're still not talking about something terrorists are going to be interested in because it simply isn't dangerous enough for them to want. Uh, what's the process 
says, what's in it for the community, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There must have been some. I wasn't there, so I don't have any intimate knowledge of it. It wasn't the reaction we've had here, we, uh, that we got here. Um, and I do know, and the only other one I know is because an MP, one of, one of my colleagues from South Australia actually put in for it himself, called the community together to find told you again, and he said, didn't get any hassle at all. In fact, another neighbour put in for it as well. I think it was another neighbour. Uh, but after the point then, he did get, he did get harassed by his neighbours after. He told them before, he called them and told them before, and the other neighbour put in, but he has had harassment from neighbours since then. They're the only two I know anything about. Um, the one in the Territory and the other two in South Australia. I, I, I can't answer your question. Thank you, John. <coughs> you know, if you have a question, would you also please state your name and uh, if you're representing anyone or where you're from. So I think you have to come down here. Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. I think I've got a big enough voice. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Just a comment about that ship, Mr. Cox, from Burns. Just a comment about that ship. Uh, I have a couple of quick things. I don't want to keep anyone very long. The revelations of the ship's complicated web of ownership, its registration in an obscure nation and the makeup of its crew comes two days after Australian senators from both sides of politics ex expressed outrage that Australian authorities do not check the ownership of ships plying their trade in Australian waters. It was unacceptable to the senators that a waste ship could sail into Sydney Harbour when little was known about its ownership or crew and its previous voyages had been to the ports of Angola, Egypt, Russia and China, where it said the level of security could not be guaranteed. Now, if they can't secure the ships, we're worried about the site. Just quickly, why would South Australia is conducting a Royal Commission indicating high-level waste, reprocessing it, and it was also said that ANSTO and the nuclear regulator said that this waste can stay at nuclear heights, uh, sorry, Lucas heights for decades. Why is it being rushed through in 120 days in these six sites? When South Australia is conducting the Royal Commission, thinking about boosting their economy by taking the high level waste, why can't the low level waste be stored where it is and when they decide in South Australia with the Royal Commission, can't it be taken there and all kept together and kept very safe? Thank you. Well, look, I'm not going to attempt to answer the questions about uh, about the ship. I'm not no intimate knowledge on it, but I'm happy to find out what I can and return it to, to Robin. Um, as regards rushing anything through, nothing is being rushed through. This has been out there for a long time. As I said, Paul Keating, back in those days, it was recognised we have this stuff in a hundred places around Australia. It's sitting in hospitals, it's sitting in uh, laboratories, etc. But mostly in hospitals. Uh, and at Lucas Heights, of course, that's the main repository. Um, and the fact that it's where it is, and, and there's never been any accident with any of it, I guess should tell us something. However, um, it is not being rushed. Um, it, I can't it must be 20, over 20 years ago that Paul Keating sat down with the, uh, with the, with the other governments and all agreed, and South Australia agreed to put it in a place where, well, it shouldn't have been too much concern to anyone, and that's when it all happened. So it's actually been happening for 25 years. To say something's being rushed, uh, I, I certainly don't agree with. To say uh, uh, the Minister take 120 days uh, to look at six sites, not to look at the sites themselves, simply to gauge what the people in the community think, I think is pretty fair. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so um, they're not even in that 120 days going to send the survey teams out, the geologists, etc., to determine uh, if it's suitable or not. Uh, they're only trying to find out if it's suitable at the moment, as Bruce pretty much said in his explanation to Robin, uh, if it's, it's suitable locally, if people are interested in taking advantage of the opportunity that it does provide as well, uh, be it jobs or the $10 million or whatever, where they want it. So really, 
Um, I don't see the rush. I, I see that they're looking at a progress, trying to work out when something. When the um, Australian Government Gazette notice that referred to Sally's flat in the Government Gazette, it was completely wrong. For example, it's, the property is not located in Sally's flat. And John, I want to ask you to get that fixed. Every time I hear the word Sally's flat in the media, I cringe. It's an absolute insult to our community. That's not a motion, Jill. Not to refer to it in its correct location. The New South Wales, the, sorry, the Australian Government Gazette had the wrong road number. It had the wrong lot DP. It refers to a lot, a little ribbon of crown land, recreation crown land along the Turon River. And uh, other things were wrong with that as well. I asked Bruce to fix it and it has not been fixed yet. And I, I refer to the department's website and it's still incorrect. They fixed up the road number, that's correct, but they still refer to the property minus 28 degrees south, which puts it up in Queensland somewhere. It is very, very sloppy and I don't have any faith in the department getting it right. Now, I also read where each site nomination has been subject to objective and evidence-based assessment against technical, economic, social and environmental factors to arrive at the shortlist. And John, I ask you, could you please let me have the process, the rigorous process that they undertook to shortlist till end and I need that information so I can make an informed input into my submission. Can you do that for me? Thank you, Lynn. As regards the address, why they didn't just put the address of the applicant, I do not know. Uh, I guess they use the term Sally's flat, so people generally would know where the, the, the reason oh. is. Bruce uh, did take note of what you said in the notes you gave to me. Um, he said, well, obviously, apparently they took it off the land, the land department uh, specifications rather than the budget address, which was a pretty silly thing to do. But uh, um, if it hasn't been fixed up where it's meant to be recorded, then I'll see that it is. Your other question you want to have? Why those 28 were the I need to know why they were dropped off. I'll get, I'll get back to you with what I can. Okay? I'm happy to go. We make the last question because we have two motions on those. This is one to you and then they make that motion to write the answer. My name's Stephen uh, uh, Warwick. I've been on the long uh, panic. And the best place on the long paddock and I've been and living on it for 15 years is Hill End. And the, the amazing thing about Hill End regarding this so-called uh, nuclear dump is Hill End is about in the centre of the Lockland Fault. The Lockland Fault runs for about 3,000 k's up the east coast of Australia. It's the most unstable area in Australia. Why? Uh, the, why have the assessors picked any area on the Logland Fault? So just to give you an idea of how still unstable it is, Hill End is famous for the biggest piece of gold to be extracted from the earth, the old Haltemann uh, nugget. The night that the Haltemann nugget was extracted, there was an earthquake here. Now can you guarantee that there won't be an earthquake at Rome? And furthermore, to your statement about this, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the waste is made completely stable, it cannot be melted. As an ex-fireman, professional fireman with the Melbourne Fire Brigade, I say that is bullshit. Anything can melt with enough heat. Thank you. Uh, okay, except what you said about him. Um, uh, as far as the fault goes, I'm not going to I'm not across that. Um, if there's an obvious fault, 
here, I'm surprised, and the is well known, I'm surprised. It's a well known fact. The Lockman fault is well known. If, if, if that is the case, it's another reason why it won't happen, but uh, I don't think we will get that far. Okay? Sure, I was actually hoping to ask if it's alright with Peter if I can just spend a couple of minutes to clarify some of the technical points of this proposal, if that's okay. Um, for people I haven't met, um, I work on a project called the Beyond Nuclear Initiative, and I've been in the Territory for 10 years tra tracking the radioactive waste dump proposal up there for Muckety. Um, and members right, Muckety was on the cards, but Muckety was completely scrapped in the middle of 2014, in the middle of a federal court case. And hang on a sec. Like this. Thank you. So I just, I just really wanted to clarify, I think it's important people have the correct information. The proposal for Hilland or one of the other six sites is for probably a co-located repository. Low level waste would be buried and permanently left on site. Long lived intermediate level waste would be put in a purpose built store, which is basically an above ground shed. It is the exact canister that has just returned from France that is currently sitting at Lucas Heights. It has been vitrified before returning and it's sitting there. What it is, it's the waste from reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel from Lucas Heights. That's a fact, it's on the government website, so it's the waste from the reprocessing of the spent nuclear fuel that came out of the nuclear reactor. Okay? And that would be probably moved to a site. In terms of the six sites, to answer your question, um, I can confidently say that communities at all of the six locations are having meetings just like you, they're organising just like you, and they share many of the similar concerns that you have as well. Okay? Because for most people, they learned about this when it dropped on them in the media, just as you heard in the media as well. So there's a lot of concern out there. And one thing that we've been asking for a long time, that's national environment groups, trade unions, health professionals, is to say that currently 95% of the waste is at two secure locations. Thank you, Jody. It's at Lucas Heights and it's at Woomera in South Australia. So for now, that's really the best place. I believe this is a rushed process. Three months for nominations, 120 days for public comment, and in a facility chosen within a year, I believe that's rushed. The reason it's taken 20 years is because the federal government's been trying to force it on people for 20 years, and they haven't ever done it the right way around. They always put what we say, the radioactive cart before the horse. They pick a site, then they say they're going to do the scientific studies. As far as I'm concerned, that's back to front. Yep. And in terms of... <laughs> My last point in terms of the community, because you're right, it is about the community and what the community says, but what is the community by the government definition? That really needs to be clarified. When they say the community gets to choose, is it this local area? Last time, Bruce Wilson alluded it to being maybe the entire Bathurst Regional Council area. So that needs to be clarified. I think it would be a very good thing to go back and ask the department to put in writing. Because who gets a say in this and who's going to benefit from this? If they're offering $10 million and it's going to the council to be distributed or to some reference group they're going to set up, you know, if that's going to be your benefit from having this facility for who knows how long, the low level waste will be there forever. Okay, I think those things need to be clarified so the community can be properly informed and make a proper decision. Thank you. Port Kembla when the transport came in 
and we watched the convoy, a kilometre long convoy, hundreds of police, riot cops hiding in the bush. It was quite an operation um, <laughs> to get the waste there because there are grave and serious and concerns about that. So I want the last thing I think is important. Just in terms of the medical waste, you often hear that we need this facility for medical waste. I just want to knock that on the head right now. We brought some copies of an article written by Dr. Margaret Beavis, um, and she's really debunked that myth really clearly. Firstly, we don't need a nuclear reactor to produce these medical isotopes, and we don't need this facility for nuclear medicine waste, because a lot of it has such a short half-life, it would decay the background levels before it even got here. <laughs> And you know, if we build a new facility, it's not going to magically disappear all of the places it's being produced currently. It's still being produced and stored until it's moved to a centralised repository. So you don't have to believe me, take the doctor's word for it, but I think that's important. We're not trying to stop anyone getting access to nuclear medicine. What we want is an open process, transparent, accountable and responsible. It's never happened in Australia. It's a really important discussion to have. What do we do with this? It's going to be our kids, 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 really left with the waste that's already produced, let alone what's still coming out of the nuclear reactor.
Thank you. I just wanted to let the meeting know that we have a representative here today, um, Mr Rod Bloomfield. He has just become the 2016 candidate for Clare for the next Xenophon team. Now, in case anybody hasn't seen the paper, Mr Bloomfield has come out in support of our cause and is 100% behind us. So, thank you. Thank you, and I declare this meeting closed.